Hi everyone, my name is Jason Kelly, an application specialist here at Symmetry. And in this video, I'm going to be looking through some of the new features for Inventor 2024. I'll be analysing the new tools and also some updates to existing features. Autodesk's key focus for this release are to improve performance, automation and core modelling workflows. A lot of the new tools are driven by customer feedback, as you, as end users, are the ones who are experiencing the software and noticing areas of improvements within your work. Here is a list of the new functions and tools that we will delve deeper into in this video. As you can see, there is a wide variety of tools spreading across the whole Inventor package, from sketching and parts to file export. So let's start in the part environment and have a look at an update to sketch in your application options. Under the drafting heading, you now have the option to create a colour scheme for the sketch elements in a drawing. This has been added due to issues with the sheet colour and sketch elements clashing and not appearing clearly on the drawing. Existing tools have been updated, including an edit function for section views. This uses a similar workflow to the direct edit tool and now gives the option to rotate a face as well as move. If you right click on the view representation you are in, it will now give you a section view area where you can choose to edit or suppress the view. This gives extra view variants, making it easier to define and visualize certain parts. Section views have also been updated in the assembly environment, as the edit and suppress feature will also appear. Large assembly performance has also been introduced for section views, as you now have the option to toggle visibility of the end cap. By default, anything with 500 or more parts will show the end cap. Extra functionality has been added to the mark feature, which was introduced in the last release. You now have the option to wrap the geometry to a face and include geometry sets. These sets work like the fillet tool and allow you different output methods in the same command. When wrapping to the face, you also have two output types on how you want the geometry to sit on a curved face, whether that's wrapped or straight on. A few changes have been added to derive and simplify to improve the workflow. When deriving in a model, Particularly large models can take quite a while to preview. There is now a quick cancel button to stop the preview from appearing. Simplify was added a couple of releases back and this saw the introduction of bounding boxes. This will create an oriented bounding box around the outer limits of the model. This has now been added as a checkbox when deriving the model in. It can be particularly useful for complex models when you are just looking to understand the space a model needs to fit into. This bounding box has also been updated in the Simplify tool, as you now have the option to change the size of it with input boxes appearing for different edge sizes, as well as the volume of the bounding box. There is also a new checkbox to export this into the model parameters. This will give users an overall size guide for more complex models for gauging space and not having to manually take measurements. These could then also be mapped through to a title block in the drawing if required. The main new tool in the part environment that has been introduced is Finish. This new tool allows you to add the manufacturing process to the part. It has been fully integrated and Finish features can be applied to individual model states, parts and assemblies, as well as eye parts and eye assemblies. To apply a Finish, click the new button once your model is ready. The Finish button can be found under the following locations. Once you have chosen it, you need to select the face or faces you wish to apply the Finish to, and then choose the type. Autodesk have broken this down into five key areas. Appearance, material coating, heat treatment, surface texture, and paint. By selecting each one, this will configure the dialog box to list different properties and variances that you may wish to apply. A standard library has been configured for each type. To edit or add finishes to the library, you will need to edit the XML file that it is pulling from, similar to editing your thread sizes. If you go to your design data location, under XML, ENUS, you will find this spreadsheet. Make sure you have read-write access to your design data to edit this document. 
So let's have a look at how the tool works. As mentioned, once your component is complete, select Finish and choose your finish type. In this example, we'll choose to add a material coating in which I'll fill out the process and appearance from the drop down list and manually edit any properties that require to be filled in. There is also an option for each of the types to add a comment at the end. Apply the finish and choose OK. You will notice a new finishes folder appears in your model browser where they can be edited, suppressed or deleted if required. If you are adding multiple, they can also be reordered. If you now go into your parameters, you will also see all of the properties in the new finishes area. In here, you can edit the customizable values as well as adding tolerances to any thicknesses that were applied. Just to note, the thickness won't appear on the physical model as this is purely applying an appearance to the file. In your parameters, you also have the option to export to a custom eye property in which this can be mapped through to a drawing title block if you are looking for information on the finish. This new tool is going to add an extra step for Inventor into a standard engineering workflow and allow companies to detail out their models even further. Parameters have had some updates as the new unit type hardness is included. This allows it to be used in this finish command or by itself. These are the unit types that are available. You can also now export Boolean parameters to a custom I property. Moving into the assembly environment and onto patterns. Rectangular patterns can now be selected or referenced by a cylindrical or conical face. You can select on the revolve face and it will reference the face axis to define the direction. Changes to circular pattern has also been added as you can now choose the fitted method. This will allow you to define the total area of the pattern feature and then you can specify the number of occurrences in the total angle. This is a good option if the design is likely to change as it will update based on the design. There is also now an option for thread direction support in the content center. When publishing a component or model with a thread, the option for thread direction now appears so you can choose whether you want it to be a left-handed or a right-handed thread. The tube and pipe environment has also had features added as you can now publish custom elbows and custom return bends to the library. Previously, you could only fit 45 or 90 degree angles for elbows. This has also been updated in the styles, so you can choose a family for the custom elbows for a default style. Moving into the drawing environment, and the biggest change is the addition of revision clouds. Revision clouds are used to identify an area of a drawing that is currently being changed or that has been changed. These revision clouds can be exported to DXF, DWG, in 2D PDF formats to ensure that read-only viewers can get a full understanding of the change or release process. So let's have a look at how you can add them. The new tool sits under the revision area on the annotate tab. When you pick the tool and the selected view, you will then need to pick the points around the area you were looking to highlight. This can then be moved, edited and deleted if required. You can also invert the revision cloud. This tends to show when a change is in progress. It will also appear in the model browser under the view you have selected on. This new function is going to add an easy step in for companies that want to display changes on particular sheets and that have a change order process. A couple of smaller tweaks have also been added to the drawing environment. Firstly, you can now pull the sheet name through to the text box. Also, a new edge symbol has been added. You can edit this symbol in your styles and standards. You can now clearly see if your parts list has been filtered as the icon appears both on the browser and the parts list. And finally, welding symbols and breakout lines have been updated to align with ISO, BSI, DIN and GB standards. Moving out of the core environment and some general updates have been added. So let's start with rendering. In Inventor Studio, Autodesk have removed the size limit on image and animation export. This means you can now support up to 16K renders, but please be aware this will vary based on what your graphics card supports. 
Continuing with graphics cards and GPU ray tracing was introduced in the last release. This was to utilize the performance of the graphics card to produce renders using a new path tracing algorithm. In the 2024 release, GPU ray tracing supports thread rendering. Although be aware, some graphics cards are still awaiting an update for this. GPU ray tracing also now supports image-based lighting backgrounds or IBLs, allowing you to generate your model into a scene. With these IBLs, previously you could only access the standard library provided by Autodesk. You are now able to add custom images and therefore scenes to your model. These can also be saved globally, so all users have access to them. For this, you will require an HDR or EXR file. You will see there is also now an area in your application options under files to point to this environment's folder. You can then activate and add this to your lighting styles with or without the image. Some new snippets have been introduced into iLogic in 2024. The main new area is the addition of access to Vault. These snippets are going to allow you to get, check in and out files, and search the Vault. Just to make you aware, these snippets only work with Vault Professional, but this is going to allow the two pieces of software to interact much more fluently with one another. A few smaller snippets, including the ability to add custom content center parts and close open forms, have also been added. As with every release, Autodesk looked to improve the collaboration between their software. Fusion 360 was previously given its own collaboration toolbar, allowing you to export models directly into one of the extensions. A further error has been introduced as you now can export to manual inspection. Once you export, it will give you a link to the file in Fusion. If you choose to right click on the file and open it in Fusion, it now checks to see if the Fusion file is out of date in Fusion Teams and prompts for an update at this point. This is going to ensure if you're utilising both pieces of software, all files are kept up to date. The final thing to note is the translator enhancements for the 24 release, which are listed here. If you're interested in moving up to the 2024 release, or interested in hearing more detail about the software updates, then please feel free to contact us here at Symmetry.